Hey, 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 good day. I hope you're doing okay. I'm your host, The Collector, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I will be walking you through the steps I took to get this lovely figure from her original base to this clear acrylic one. Let's begin. Today. Why did I want to change the base in the first place? Well, I always thought the base was unnecessarily big, especially given that it's only to accommodate the sword that she holds. The design is actually pretty bad. Look at the stupid clear block that's just- I broke one of the pegs. I had an interest in maybe replacing the base one day, but this was the catalyst for actually going ahead and making the change. I had an idea of how I wanted to do this, but I've never actually done it before, so I looked online to see if I could find some guides, and I found a really solid one on my figure collection by Nahobino. I will link it in the description, along with all the other resources I used. But before we start, let me address this issue. If you have a figure with one of the pegs being stuck in the foot like so, get yourself a pin vise. Screw the pin vise into the peg itself at an angle. You do it at an angle so that you can pull on the actual peg while you're pulling on the pin vise. And bam. So firstly, we have to measure the pegs on the base to make sure our replacement ones are the same or a similar size. For X10, based on my measurements, her right leg's peg is 6mm in diameter and her left leg's peg is 5mm in diameter. Both are the same length. I added a few extra millimeters to accommodate for the holes I'll be drilling. After you get your measurements, you can order dowel pins, but where do you get them in the first place? I tried to buy dowel pins from Amazon, but getting the exact sizes that I wanted was almost impossible. A bit of a random Google led me to Accu. Accu's website provides dowel pins with a wide range of diameters and lengths. This is not a sponsored segment, and you can choose how many you want in a pack. It's really great. I highly suggest the website, at least if you're in the UK. For the acrylic discs, try to get something that's a decent level of thickness, so it doesn't snap in half when you drill it. The ones that I ordered are all 6mm thick. You can buy acrylic discs from Etsy. Sellers there sell the acrylic discs at various thickness levels and diameters. I'll link the discs I ordered in the description. You're going to need to mark the locations where the holes you're going to drill will be. There are many ways you can do this. You're going to need a drill, obviously. The most effective way of doing this step would be to use a bench drill, so shaking is prevented. I, unfortunately, don't have one in my home currently, so I use the manual power drill. This is the one I'm using. To help stabilize my hand, I use the drill guide. You'll need to buy drill bits that match the diameter for all your dowel pins. In my case, I needed a 5mm and a 6mm drill bit. They should be available in most tool stores. I got my drill and the bits from Robert Dias. I watched a video on acrylic disc drilling, I'll link in the description, and the presenter suggested to use dish soap as lubricant on your drill bit for a much smoother drilling process. Okay, I'm going to start drilling now. Acrylic melts quite fast, so you don't want to drill too fast or too slow, otherwise you're going to end up with weird shapes inside the hole. Also, make sure to air the hole out occasionally. Let's see the work that I have done. The 5mm hole is looking pretty lovely if I do say so myself. I definitely had some stability issues with the 6mm hole and it kind of shows. Still. It has a good shape lower into it, and it should be very stable. The unfortunate problem with the drill guide I have is that the holes were either too small or too big for both of the drill bits, so that was, that was not fun. Alright, I think I'm satisfied with my progress. The holes are sufficiently drilled through, and they look even. Before anything, just put each peg into the hole to see if they actually fit, and hopefully don't wobble too much. 
Once that's been checked and confirmed, put a small amount of super glue into each hole. Now just put the two pegs back in the holes and hey presto! Now we just wait for the glue to dry and it's time for me to go to bed. So let's just jump right into it. It's a new day and now that I'm refreshed, let's check out the damage. Quite a few scuffs around the base here and there. That's probably due to me using wipes. But not to worry, simply using a microfiber cloth with some water got rid of these. They are very stable and are not wobbling at all. And they look pretty even. I guess it's time to put the rabbits onto the pegs. Look at all this free space. Now we have to address the elephant in the room, her sword. For her sword I simply just used glue tag on her hands and stuck it there. Works like a charm, honestly. Overall, I think this was a success. Things I need to work on for next time are the drilling process, the amount of super glue, and cleaning the base after drilling. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps you make your own bases at home. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and I still do not have an outro. Yeah.